Howdy, everyone. I'm Eric Howard with Tilson Homes. Welcome to Tilson Live. It is Tuesday. We are live, live on Facebook, live on YouTube. I am joined in person today by... Dawn Dantzler. Hi, Dawn. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, thanks for coming and doing this. So as you can yeah. see, we are not at our normal locations. We are in one of our design centers. We've got all of the color things. So what are we going to be talking about today, Dawn? We are going to be talking about a lot of the design options. We can't possibly show you all of them because, as you can see, there's a lot. Um, we're going to talk about some of the choices that you have when building your Tilson home and kind of walk you through the different options that you have to select. Um, we have some exciting new stuff to show you guys. Um, we've got a new luxury vinyl program um, to present to you, and we also have a new selection of design mood boards um, that were put together that we previewed to you guys yesterday, and I think you're going to be really excited about them. So, as always, first of all, tell us where you're watching from, where you're building, drop your comments into the chat. We're doing a little bit differently today. Uh, we will be leveraging the great and wonderful, masterful Kelsey Burke, who will be assisting us with the comments. So, we won't have the comments live on the screen like we usually do, but she'll be announcing them to us so that we know what people are asking. And yes. this is going to go flawlessly. We can't wait. This it's going to be fantastic. beautiful. Yep. It's going to so, be great. But too, tell us, tell us where you're watching from, tell us where you're building, tell us what part of the process that you're in. If you're just thinking about building a home on your land, or if maybe you're already under contract, or you're under construction, or you're finished, like Will Rhodes, who I'm sure is gonna be joining us, if not already, um, whereabouts, whereabouts in the process you are, and maybe what animals you're taking care of today. Yes. All right, so, um, but we will also be answering any questions you want to about building on your land. So we're here each and every week for you guys as a resource, that's why we do this. So we want you to get the most information possible, the most up-to-date information possible, as accurate as we can present it, as transparent as we can present it about what's happening in the industry, what the process is for building a home on your land. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got any questions all about permitting or site prep or design. Utilities, um, yeah, chain issues. Financing, yes. we know that's a big one these days. But obviously we are here to talk primarily about design options, color selection ideas, kind of what, what we can do to make this not such an overwhelming Yes, because when you do come for your design appointment, there are a lot of decisions that you're going to make. Some that you're probably prepared for, like you're going to pick your stone, your brick, uh, your paint color for the exterior. But we're also going to ask you to choose, you know, grout, uh, light switches, things like that. So it's really, it could be a little bit overwhelming if you're not fully kind of prepared to be making those types of decisions. Now, of course, we have folks to assist you. Yes. So you aren't just turned loose inside here to go figure it out. And it's not us. Good news. Not us. Great news. It is not well. You'd be fine. I Trade I right. would not be fine. I would okay, not be fine. so, well, we do go with solid colors. Yeah, well, yeah. We can do Christmas, apparently. We yes, we can. In July. Or now August. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Kelsey, do we have anybody joining us yet? Where are they watching from? We do. So, we have Anne joining us from Pearland, building in Fayette County. Very cool. Will is here. He says hi, hi from Klondike. Good. Hi, Will. We have Julie Gavehart. Hey, Tilson peeps. We have a foundation and a budding little builder. Our eight-year-old son, Jet, had the best time with the concrete trucks and our builder, Colton. Oh, yeah, awesome. Cool yeah, we saw some amazing pictures of that. That looked like a fun day. We have Jorana Hendricks. Howdy from Bandera. Howdy. And Wes, how, hello and howdy from Greenville. Watching my... Watching in my new Tilson home, the Canyon Beat, and I'm loving it. All right, nice. Wes, so you finally welcome. Welcome. Phoenix. Hey, That's great. Out of Arizona. Home in Greenville. We have Lisa, hi from Fort Worth, building a rock wall at PK Lake soon. Right. We hear nice. from Jody, love her, that will be released to construction in late October. Can't wait. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks for joining us. We have Ashley Bounds on YouTube. Hello, we will be building eventually an RGR, watching from California. Good old Republic Grand Ranch, fantastic. Rebecca says, howdy from Kyle, building in Driftwood. Nice. And Sean says, hello, building in San Marcos. All right. Well, that's very cool. Thank you all for joining us. Again, keep dropping your questions into the chat. Kelsey's going to be monitoring. We have some really complicated, like, football signals that we'll be doing so that she can tell us. Um, but truly, no, we're, we're excited to have your questions. But we do want to get started into this design center experience. So. Mm -hmm. How do we even start? Like, what, where do we begin this So to thing? start, we, we kind of started talking about before that you will have someone to guide you through. We do have a free session for you with an interior designer. So a professional who actually knows all about colors is going to actually help you do this. Um, but where we're going to start is with the outside of your home. Um, so we would be talking about if, you're, if you chose an elevation that is stone or brick, um, we will start going through uh, all of those kind of color selections with you. Um, so you'll be looking at real samples, um, in the design center, you can play around with these a little bit on our website to kind of get an idea, but it's always better to come in and look at them in person. Uh, we're putting up a couple of your brick options. 
um, that you have. If there's anything specific that you guys want us to show you and we have it here, uh, we would be happy to do so. Just drop, drop the comment to Kelsey and we will try to find that sample for I you. I will go on a scavenger hunt <laughs> and I will locate it. Um, but we just, for this, have just kind of pulled some of the more popular ones um, according to the team here. So these are ones that they're saying are very popular. Um, this has got kind of that white white brick look to it that everybody's Yeah, and an interesting question that we like get that. is, you know, of course the samples are kind of like a veneer so that it uh, it looks small, but it's done that way. So, so that, I can pick them up. Right, so that it, they, they don't damage things, they don't take a lot of space. So the brick that we will be installing on your home is a full brick. Uh, and same goes for the stone that you mm -hmm. see behind us here. So again, these are just kind of veneers and really it's just for a weight situation and, and ability to move them around. These are fixed, which I really like because moving things around gets damaged. Yes. Um, but th we do employ veneers in some places, like on um, sometimes on interior walls, we'll do a veneer because they take up less space, less of your interior space. And then also sometimes on exterior chimneys. Uh, also, we'll if there's that. a high gable, mm -hmm. um, yep. they'll do a veneer up there. Just Again, it's just a weight issue. You don't want really full stones just sort of hanging over nothing. Like right. you have to make sure there's something there to support them if you're going to use a full stone. So what could they have besides stone or brick? You could have hardy plank. Um, so we do that in both the you know traditional vertical lap siding um, as well as the board and batten. Um, and then we also have shake on some of the elevations that we have. Um, and then you also would have stucco. And right. for that, you really have pull out a Sherwin Williams color palette. That's that's your choices there for your exterior. Yeah, colors. there's usually uh, there three different um, finishes, kind of Adobe mm -hmm. type finishes, and then beyond that, yeah, you're gonna pick a paint color. Um, we and then we also have some like pre-designed. Um, combinations that go together that they can show you in the design center that are already paired up with brick and stone, kind of showing you these are good paint colors to use. Yep, yeah, we have all that kind of pre-selected for you, so it's not mm -hmm. quite as overwhelming. Handing you a fan deck is not usually a good idea, yeah. so we try to... Try <laughs> it can, can be a little overwhelming to look at 300 shades of white. Right. So, so we got the outside kind of done, mm -hmm. and so we've got our stone and brick picked out. We've got our paint color, our trim colors. Uh, what else? we got to cover this thing up with something on the top. Oh, we need shingles. Yeah. So we use uh, Owens Corning is our shingle provider. These are the Oak Ridge line. They do have a limited lifetime warranty on them. Um, so that we're going to show you is what's included in the homes. There are other colors. Mm -hmm. Don these are has, just the two Don most popular ones. Don has opinions about colors. I, I have opinions about roof color. Like these are, these are the roof colors. <laughs> Uh, and there's browns, and you know, if there are others, these are just the most popular. These are her favorite. Um, so, and there are a couple options available as well. There's the duration line that's available. There's the um, WeatherGuard HP that's available that has a certain um, hail rating on it. And then the, all the way, you can go to a metal roof, which uh, is, is an option as well. Both the Galvalume, so kind of the shiny metal, and also uh, colored metal, if that's something that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. um, they are. They are pricey alternatives, but and they're purely cosmetic. Something kind of a misnomer that people think is that a yeah, metal, metal roof, is not more durable. Right, that a metal roof can't get damaged, and that's not true. Um, they can get hail damaged just like a shingled roof. Um, so anyway, you're going to pick a shingle color and get the whole outside of the house done, and then then we're done, right? Finish, yeah. yeah. So thanks for All joining right, us. Bye. No. Um, then we're heading inside. Then we're heading inside. And there are so many choices inside. So our interiors designers tell us that the best thing to do is to start with your flooring um, and go from there because really it's a constant color that is throughout your home. Um, so we have many, many options for flooring. You've got carpets, you've got wood floor, you have tile. Um, we do want to show off kind of the options for our um, LVP, the luxury vinyl plank. Uh, because we did just get a brand new line. Um, so this is all brand new options for you um, that is just arriving at our design centers last week. Uh, so just wanted to show you, uh, this is the new included um, vinyl plank. So you can do this in any area that would be a hard surface on your plants, all your wet areas, your kitchen, your utility, your foyer, your bathrooms. Um, and some of you may have been notified already by either your builder or sales consultant to, to have to come in and reselect in some cases, mm -hmm. um, probably in a lot of cases. But there are, I mean, it is a, in my opinion, a vastly better option. I am much more pleased with these colors. I like it. It's a wider plank than the other option would have been. So it looks more like um, real wood than the other ones that we did. And you do have more options with colors. So you actually can feel the uh, texture yes. in it quite a bit. So. It's nice, but there are, 
I mean, I think seven different colors. Yeah, this is the only the only thing that we're going to show you all of the options really quick, just because we know there are so many of you that are going to be kind of coming into the design center to reselect, because unfortunately the previous product is no longer available. So this is the ones that um, you would be choosing from. This one is actually a level two. Oh, like. well, we'll do that here in a second. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a great, great new flooring um, system. Really like it. Um, these are actually seven inch wide. Um, on the planks, and I believe it's a cork backing on this one. Um, it's a Shaw product. And yeah. Just so there really, are six really color pretty. selections, not seven. The yes. seventh one was a, a level two. There are another six or seven level twos mm -hmm. that are available. And it's a totally new program as well. Yes. So um, if you are that early on in the process where you haven't made these selections yet, you definitely want to get to your local design center and, and go check these out because they're, they're pretty impressive. And again, if you're being notified uh, by one of our offices, then we'd be glad to have you there. So, Kelsey. Kelsey says we have lots of questions. <laughs> we do. So we have Pamela joining us from Gillespie County. Oh, cool. Her build is scheduled to start in September, and she's wondering how long the build takes once it starts. So construction time right now is averaging between actual construction. When we start, it's about 12 months of actual construction, about between 330, 360 days. Now, unfortunately, a lot of that is waiting. In other words, it doesn't take us that long to physically build the house, but particularly in that in Gillespie County, it is a high, high demand area. That's one of the top three in the state, actually, uh, between Gillespie, Williamson, and Burnett, Burnett or Travis, and they're kind of a neck and neck there. But well, Travis just takes longer because Travis. Right. So you're um, you're going to see a lot of inactivity, unfortunately. But we want to be as transparent as possible about that of waiting on trades because there is so much demand in that area. And part of that is it's not really close to, it, it's close to other areas that are also booming, like San Antonio. It's really the closest metropolitan area. And so getting trades out to Gillespie County, every builder that's out there, it, it is a struggle. And it's, it's unfortunately just a lot of herp and weight. But I know we've got that price locked in for you, um, and that's the main thing. And, but yeah, so you're, you're about, I mean, hopefully those times will come down mm -hmm. uh, if the supply chain can start to catch up a little bit. But we, we, I'm still more comfortable telling people 12 months. If it's done before that, Fantastic. And where you're going to feel a lot of that time where it, it, you just kind of are sitting is when you're at the beginning and they're doing what we call the mechanicals, which is your electrical, your initial plumbing, and your HVAC install. Those all have to be done one at a time. And we can only have that one contractor in the home um, at, at once. We can't have multiple people in there uh, doing it. So it is something that we kind of have to schedule sequentially. And um, we, we are waiting a lot of times, particularly yeah. for the HVAC. And that really starts all the way back with foundation. I mean, yeah. You, you got to put the foundation in before you can do the frame. You got to put the frame in before you can run the electrical HVAC and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And so, and then that has to be inspected. So you're um, going to pause for inspections. Then yeah. you'll do your installation. You'll have another inspection. Um, and then we get sheetrock up. The good news is when sheetrock is up, we can have multiple people in the house at one time. So things If we can start, get them out there. If we can get them out there. <laughs> so it's not as, you know, scheduling isn't stuck on this guy has to finish but first. there will be days on end that go by where there is inactivity there mm -hmm. could be as long as a week or more that go by with inactivity between waiting on inspections or between just waiting between trades and that's just the reality right now we don't like it any more than anybody else but i know we got other questions yes so thanks for asking thank you we have polly joining us huh. in grape town their slab forms are in place and next week is their slab pour fingers yes. crossed yeah. Send us pictures. That's super exciting. And then we have L Velez. We are in the hill country, and the front of our home faces a downward land slope that continues to go downward. Okay. So can you explain how Tilson ensures positive drainage away from the foundation of the home, and will warranty cover it if we have issues after closing? So yeah, we, we make sure part of the, what we have to do by code and by the warranty company is establish positive drainage all the way around the home. So we have to make sure when we leave, that water flows away. Sometimes that involves putting in some type of a swale if we need to, so bringing in some material at some time, sometimes just cutting down on one side to get the water to go around the home, which I'm presuming is what the issue might be. And then now after we're done, it is the homeowner's responsibility to maintain that positive drainage. So you want to be careful about, you know, if you do additional buildings, whether like a storage building or metal building, swimming pool, landscaping, um, you don't want to do anything that would trap that water on any one side of the home. Um, so you don't want to you want to maintain that drainage. You know, if you get a big heavy rainstorm and some of that starts to kind of wash out over time, you need to build that back up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a great question. But yeah, we start off with we have to do that, and then it is a homeowner maintenance item 
The other thing I will say to be very careful about is gutters, um, because when you put you install your gutters, they're going to end it right at your foundation. You need to make sure that you are extending out that downspout another 10 feet away from your foundation. Yep. Otherwise, you're going to create waterfalls. That's great advice. All right, we have a few questions about the new floors. Okay. okay. So Courtney is wondering um, if she still doesn't have HVAC, can she switch floors? So if you ha if you have not been notified that you need to switch floors, the answer is probably not. Um, yours will have already been ordered. So they fulfilled as many on the of the POs that they possibly could, um, and and a lot of those were filled months ago. Uh, so in other words, the companies we work with, they have warehouse areas, they have containers reserved, warehouses here, warehouses in other parts of the country, warehouses in other parts of the world. Um, so this is much more than just uh, if you want to come in and change, you can change. The, the only way I would say you're going to be able to change is if we've notified you and said, hey, it's not a thing, we can't get it, the mm -hmm. product's been discontinued in some way, and you need to come reselect. But otherwise than that, no, I would not say that, that HVAC is, you're, you're too far along in the process traditionally. All right, and then we also have Fritz joining us on YouTube. Hi guys, for homes starting now, will the HVAC system meet CR2 requirements? <laughs> we are working on that. Actually, Linux is working on that as we speak. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's the thing that they've that they've already started tackling. And I mean, suffice it to say, when the code changes, we have to meet code. Mm -hmm. um, there are gonna, there's a couple of different cutoff points. So I won't get into on the design center one, but suffice it to say that yeah, we have our, our product implementation team is working on that. In fact, they have a meeting tomorrow. Um, about what the next steps are with that after hearing from our from the manufacturer. So Linux is all over it. Great. And then one more. We have Ashley on YouTube. Off topic, we've sketched up a few variations of your existing plans. For example, a larger bathroom on the Paladuro or a larger dining room in the San Jacinto. What are the limitations for changes aside from the laws of physics? Budget and building code. Um, the other thing, especially since you specifically mentioned the San Jacinto, that is a symmetrical plan. Um, so you're going to want to talk to your design consultant about, you know, anytime you're changing the floor plan and adding space or removing space, you're going to be affecting what the outside looks like. So usually on like the San Jacinto, if we add space to the dining room, we also add it to the bedrooms on the other side, just so that you maintain that outside look. If you don't care about that and you want more dimension on your home, good to go. Uh, drafting will show you what that looks like, but usually that's the kind of stuff that we need to do. But there's really, like I said, it's really budget and, and building code. So just kind of come on in, bring us your ideas, and we'll figure yeah, out what works for you. That's the best advice, is go ahead and set that yeah. appointment and get in there, because there are changes that, that sometimes you can make that maybe they affect a lot of other things. And, mm -hmm. and may, you may be better served doing something a little bit different, and that's where your sales consultant will help guide you through that. So. And kind of tell them what you're looking to accomplish, because mm -hmm. there might be a different way to do it. Yep. Okay, All so right. uh, we're going to continue a little bit with floors. So we have lots of different options. This is one of the tiles. So we have, um, we've gone over, you know, vinyl plank. We have engineered wood products. We have tiles, or so some of this could be on your wall tile as well. So mm -hmm. shower tiles. This one is showing you that it does come with a, a pattern that we can use on shower floors. So we do slope, we, are, we build, job build our shower floors. We don't use the little acrylic or fiberglass pans. Um, so we, we slope that floor to the drain and we use a smaller tile like this. Also makes it less slippery because you get more grout. Um, what else on floors? Well, it's just some of the level two Absolutely. vinyl plank. I got it right here. Just pulled a couple of them. Oh, Dawn pulled all of them. <laughs> she likes the vinyl. I like new things. <laughs> so yeah, this is the level two, uh, which again, lots of different color options. I'm going to kind of stack them so a little It bit. really does. It's a little bit thicker product than the level one. It's um, also a wider plank. These are nine inches. Yep. So I think we're going to fill up the fill up the table here. Our, our videographers are going to go insane with what we're doing. We did not rehearse setup. this, guys. What are you doing? I never. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's there's a lot of again. This is a, a 20 mil thick product, 15 year uh, warranty on it. Um, really, really, really stout, resilient product. Which of course, for most of our folks doing that country living, um, is good. It, it's got a cork backing as well. Mm -hmm. Very water resistant, um, pet resistant kind of material. So we have a lot of customers, of course, have critters um, running around. And so this is a, the vinyl planks, but a, kind of a game changer for those customers because mm -hmm. um, it's, it's affordable. It's much more resilient than wood floors and um, not nearly as kind of loud as, as the tile, but those are all still good options as well and totally different yep. kind of look. So what happens after floors? After Dawn? floors, uh, we recommend looking at cabinets. Oh boy. 
And guys, keep dropping your questions into the chat. Kelsey is still monitoring it, and she'll stop us every now and then. But if you've got any questions on anything we're showing, um, just holler. So we are using Kentmore cabinets. We just pulled a, 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 a kind of a, that's not a random sample, but certainly various samples. Mm -hmm. um, some of these are the included. Some of these are going to be options for all of our homes. But basically, anytime you're going to see this, the flat panel um, and, and the species of, of poplar, that's going to be an included option. And then, of course, we have different colors of painted options. So you've probably mm -hmm. seen these in the design center. Um, they, we do have, you can have separate colors if you want. We do some folks that have island one color and maybe the rest of the cabinets in the kitchen a different color, certainly something different maybe in the, in the bathroom, or you can have all the same. Great. It's up to you. But we have, um, the paint is real popular these days. This one actually has a glaze on it. Um, and so there's, there's two different options of glazes. There's kind of more of an ebony glaze and then more of a, a brown or tan glaze, or you can have it with no glaze mm -hmm. uh, if you want to. And that could be on the painted or the stained. So this stained one also has a glaze on there. And then there are tons of cabinet options. Yes. That we won't get into on here, but your trash can pullouts and your tray pullouts and your spice racks and chef's pantries and knife locks, every, you know, everything. Right. So just if you, you have any specific questions about your kitchen, make sure to you know, ask your design, your consultant, what's available, um, and they can kind of help you out. And the way that. we kind of help you through these as well. Or we have our, our little basket of colors, right? So we've got this one. This is the color of my shirt. Um, we've got blue that everyone... Eric's favorite. Oh, we love blue for whatever reason. Um, there's, I mean, there's truly, like, you can get pretty wild um, with customization. And then we show you other stain colors, mm -hmm. of course, as well. Um, but, yeah, it, it can be, again, having someone that can help you through Navigate all of this... Navigate all of this, yeah. Is, ...is very, very, very helpful. Um, this does, of course, a lot of these will impact the pricing, so it's not uncommon as you roll through the process, you go into the design center with your sales consultant, and they walk you through kind of, hey, what are you thinking, what do you feel, and this is part of our, our upfront desktop pricing, this is what it's all about, is we can price this out for you, mm -hmm. um, and, and before you ever sign an agreement with us, you know what you're paying for all the various options. Yeah, and then you also have the, you know, the choice in door styles. Something else to keep in mind is your drawer fronts could also be a different style, so ask about that and what your options are there as well. Yep, and of course we have the pulls mm -hmm. that go on them as well. You're gonna select those, um, and once you get your countertops, now we gotta talk, I'm sorry, you talk cabinets. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. I messed it up. <laughs> it's time for countertops. Again, keep dropping your questions in the chat. We'll answer all questions about anything design related, on your lot building related, time frame related. Kelsey, who has questions? We have a couple more questions about the flooring. Okay. So, Durana is wondering when exactly they will be told by their design consultant if they need to swap out their flooring. Uh, we, we are notifying people right now. Mm -hmm. So, if it's, if it's something that, I mean, I know of several that have already been notified. There's probably folks watching that have already been notified. Right. Um, There's so people watching who have already reselected. They were telling us earlier. Yeah. So, so, so if, if you haven't been notified, I'm not going to say it's not a thing uh, or can't be a thing in the future. I mean, this is just the most recent thing, guys. I mean, the right. supply chain stuff is, is still a, a screaming mess. So, um, this won't be the last thing that gets discontinued or so, this just happens to, because so many people select it, this happens to be a bigger splash type of item. Which, by the way, it's August 2nd, 2022. Everything we're showing you is available today. That is, doesn't mean it's available tomorrow. Um, just to be completely honest. Preach. Um, so we've got a couple of different, you know, we've, of course, we've got granite that's included. Um, and then we've got several levels of that. We see a lot of people doing... Quartz. Quartz, yeah. Um, benefits, one way or the other. Why, why would you do quartz maybe over granite? If you like control. Um, quartz is probably for you. Um, so, hey. <laughs> <laughs> granite is a natural product. So it's going to be like the stone on the exterior of your home. It's going to vary in colorations and patterns. And the slab that you get isn't going to look like the slab that you saw um, necessarily. It's going to be similar, but it won't be exactly the same. Um, and so if you're uncomfortable with that level of deviation, you would want to go with probably a quartz because since that's manufactured, it's a lot more controlled in the finish that you're getting. So what you're seeing is pretty much what you're going to get. Yeah. 
And by the way, I'm grateful that you are in control because none of this stuff would ever look like this if she wasn't. Okay, let's be fair. None of our stuff ever looks like this. That's David. <laughs> yeah, big shout out to David Bugano and his team um, for doing this production. This is great. But yeah, these are. This is a very small selection of what we have. These are just like the the ones that we like, and you know the good old standby, the super popular things. Yeah, so, yeah, and again, if you if you know part of the appeal of the granite is the randomness of it. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's quarried out of the ground. There are no two pieces that are alike. Um, there are some that certainly are more random than others, uh, have a higher color variation than others. And so typically the higher you go up in levels, the higher that color variation could be. So you've probably seen it at a restaurant or hotel where it's got just a big streak of some random color going through it. That a designer probably chose that, that specific, specific slab, one, particularly right. because of that. So, um, but, but just be aware when you're doing those selections that you know, your quartz is gonna be more reliable, standby, Color consistent, granite, if you like, randomness. Yeah. Um, the surprises. So and then you got. This is another place where if you wanted to do something different on a kitchen island or if you wanted to change it up in the different bathrooms, you can. So if you wanted to upgrade your master bathroom, app, you know, but not the kids' bathrooms, absolutely, you know, you can do that, no problem. And I did want to show one, the uh, this, this leather finish. So uh, you can tell, but it's, there's not a. Um, there's no glare. There's shine. To it. Yeah. So it's a kind of a, a leather finish, which, you know, again, some people, if you don't want that glossy, glossy finish, we do have, uh, we, we can work with that option. So, and it Very is nice. real three centimeter, inch and three sixteenths granite. So now backsplash. Backsplash. We, we think Subway Tile has come full circle. Yes. You guys, get to keep putting your questions in the chat. We'll answer all your questions while we're here. These are the bigger ones. Right. So, um, and there's there's different sizes. There's different styles. There are, yeah, a, a lot of options. We use Dow Tile. Um, is primarily well, that's exclusively actually, for our tile selections. So we're seeing a lot of these more decorative patterns. Maybe hard to tell when this one, but it actually has like a it's got a bevel, bevel to it, to it, which gives you some texture the back on the backsplash of your kitchen. Where um, we also see some inserts or decorative inserts, um, and have lots of different options you could do like that. Yeah. Um, and what I like to show about this this um, uh, style is that unlike a lot of builders, it's all we're not charging you extra for the different colors. Like it's it's all the same to us. It doesn't matter what color you're you're choosing. And again, we're just, the main ones. Yeah, trying to show you just again how many options there are. Where mm -hmm. we can't possibly show you every single one that we have, but most of these little ones you're seeing are really just for the color to help you with the, the colors. Um, these are the sizes and the bevels and yep. so three by six is a very, very popular size. The three by nine or three by twelve we're seeing is very, very popular as well. And we're seeing a lot of the, the classic white or black, um, but you also have the choice of all these other colors. And mm -hmm. then these are just amazing. I love these, this line. Um, used either as a backsplash or even as just like an accent row in your showers or you know, master pub mm -hmm. kind of areas. So. Beautiful. Good stuff. So we got cabinets, we got countertops, we got a backsplash, we got floor coverings. We gotta have a way to get like Oh, you want to show your, your other tiles there? Oh, yeah. Then, there, then there's the, the other favorite tiles that we, we see a lot um, that are just a little bit more farmhousey. Uh, these are very popular as well. And again, we've got a surprise to show you guys closer to the end of a new mood boards that we're, we're launching. That we're so you might recognize this from our canyon. Um, yep. So we're seeing a lot of folks, you know, again, just maybe just do one room. Um, and I think just the utility room in the canyon is mm -hmm. done. Um, yep. in this tile. So, uh, and again, your design, your sales consultant can walk you through all of this and, and how to choose it, price it out for you. Um, and, you know, we get all our pricing, not just from Dow Tile, but also the installers. And that's one thing that kind of will trip people up sometimes is, well, I saw it at Dow Tile for X dollars a square foot. And I'm like, yes, yes, you can buy it for that, but you can't install a tile like this for the same price as you install a tile like this or a regular old 12 by 12 tile. It's a lot more labor intensive, more cuts. It takes it takes a, a really a more of a craftsman to lay it out. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to just go in there and start cutting tile and sticking it up 
uh, however you feel like it. You need to, they, I mean, you see these guys do it. They're using laser levels. They're taking pencils, marking center lines on rooms and working their way out from there to make sure that it lays out evenly. That goes for showers. Um, that goes for shower floors, shower walls, floors themselves. So there's, there's some real thought and planning put into that. So it looks like we have questions. <laughs> let's hear questions. We have a few questions. So for starters, Sheila is wondering what the names of the stone are behind you, the okay. second on the top and the fourth on the top. All right. So <laughs> they're written on the sides, I believe. Yeah. So this one here is a uh, tumbleweed tan quarry chop. Um, so the quarry chop is, is where it's kind of rounded on the edges, right? So not flagstone like this, but it's chop. It's not sawed like this is. It's hard, maybe hard to tell that. Um, and then the last one over here, if I can do this without tripping and falling on a live TV. Uh, yeah, autumn blend sawn. Um, so you can see where the autumn blend over here is, maybe you can see it, it was in frame, um, is it is a clean cut as opposed to kind of a quarry chop. So we got, I hope I answered that right. So tumbleweed, tan, quarry chop, and autumn blend sawn. An autumn blend, just be aware, what, if you do like it, it is going to have more of like your oranges, mm -hmm. um, oranges and yellows in it. So I would recommend see, looking at what it looks like on a full house um, as well. Which we have pictures of. Yeah, we do. Uh, your design, design consultants have pictures of that. And Kelsey and I dig them up for customers all the time. So let us know if you have questions. You dig up stuff. L is asking. We dig up pictures. I do not dig up stone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so L's framing recently started. Can you tell us about the construction process when it comes to I beams and how are your trusses prefabricated? Okay, so we don't prefabricate trusses. Uh, we don't use trusses at all. all. All of our trusses are typically used for roof systems, um, and so all of ours are what's called stick built, or they're job they're cut on site. So we lay out our ceiling joists and roof rafters for the ceiling. Uh, and attic systems. The engineered wood products that you're seeing are going to be like your Boise Cascade eye joists, typically where there's going to be a second floor or sometimes over a garage ceiling where we're spanning long distances and then yeah, you'll usually see LVLs, uh, laminated veneer lumber, which is an engineered wood product that's carrying large loads. Um, so you don't see them once the house is finished. I don't still really any the lumber once the house is finished, but hopefully not. Yeah, the, um, but you'll see them usually in the middle of a big family room span with ceiling joists hanging off of either end of them. Uh, again, they're for spanning large distances. Typically anything over about 15, 16 feet, we're gonna start getting into an engineer wood product of some sort, whether it's an eye joist or whether it's an LVL. We used to use glue lambs years and years ago, laminated beams. So those are times where we would employ one of those. And we actually, when we're gonna do that, we send the floor plan, the layout to, mm -hmm. right now we use Boise Cascade. So we'll send it to Boise Cascade directly they lay out the, their iJoy system that they're going to use in the LVLs, and they send that back to our design and drafting team, and that's how, it's, that's how, we, that's how we decide it's going to be laid out. We don't decide. Um, we do have a lot of experience, obviously. I mean, our drafting team and our construction teams, we've been doing this a long time, so we're comfortable with what will span. There are codes for the span tables. Mm -hmm. So for 2 by 6s 2 by 8s 2 by 10s 2 by 12s what grade of lumber it is, number 1, number 2, number 3, they have different spans that they are by code allowed to and go on with the species of wood. Southern yellow pine versus spruce, pine, and fir, they, they can span different distances. So we take all that data, we send it to Boise Cascade, they send it back the way that they believe it's going to work best, and we go from there. Mm -hmm. Great. Alta Gracia is in the framing phase of her Rockwall and Texas Grand Ranch. And she has a question regarding the cabinet options. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't told that they had more options besides the garbage pullout and some of the options that were already part of the plan. And they're wondering if we have an option now to make a change. On cabinets, I would say no. No. Unfortunately, yeah, Kent Moore has been, they, they have, like every other manufacturer, there's no bandwidth to, to run back through those. those. Those cabinets were ordered actually about when the file was released to construction. Um, there's a very good chance that they are already in production or finished um, with production. So I don't know that there's, you know, it would be best to maybe ask your building superintendent if there's things that can be added that way, uh, but don't be surprised if the answer is a no, unfortunately. Yeah. And we have a question from Martina on YouTube. Hello from Colleen. What part okay. of the process would we be notified floors need to be changed? We have plumbing and electrical, but no HVAC. Yeah, again, if the building superintendents, we, we just got notified this of like 
Friday before last? Yes. From the manufacturer, from, from Weizenbaker, from our flooring uh, supplier. Um, and so they, that went to our vendor management team, our cost management team. They disseminated that information out that Friday afternoon to our sales and construction teams. And so just the, really last week and the first part of this week, we've just now been being able to reach out to customers. Again, some customers have already been contacted. They've already come out and reselected. So um, if you're concerned, you can call your builder or call your sales consultant. Yeah. Um, but if you haven't been notified, there's probably a chance that you're, you may not have to change anything. In other words, we got yours. Yep. Earl is wondering what changes are involved when you go with spray foam over regular insulation. That is a great question. Okay, so we typically use, so we ask him, we use bat, in, in Climate Zone 2, we use bat insulation in your walls, so an R15 bat, and then an R38 blown fiberglass in the attic. Um, we go to spray foam, you don't do any bats, it's all sealed up, so we don't do the, the attic floor, it's actually the rafters, so the parts going up at an angle that are sealed with the spray foam. So you're gonna do away with your, you're sealing the whole thermal envelope, the, the building envelope. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna do away with the pre-ventilated, pre-drilled ventilated, at it, hardy soffit, sorry. Any so, of that passive ventilation that we yeah, you're, in your Yeah, your uh, ridge venting, you won't have that. No ridge venting, you don't need the radiant barrier decking because we're gonna be spraying the backside of the decking with spray foam. Mm -hmm. So the radiant barrier decking goes away, The all the passive ventilation goes away, like Don said, your um, pre-drilled ventilated soffits, your ridge venting, uh, we, we add a dehumidifier when we go to spray foam because the house is so tight. Even in the hill country area like we are here, we still add a dehumidifier to get that moisture out of the house. Um, a couple of other little, there's some little framing details that happen that are that uh, you probably don't really need to worry about, but it's the way we could get insulation in places. Mm -hmm. And then um, most importantly is if you have gas furnaces or water heaters, that is a different ball game. Uh, you either need to switch over to tankless uh, or we have to upgrade to a, a like a super high efficient one that burns most of the fuel. So the gas appliances, much like your car, you don't burn all the gas that goes into the engine of your car. That's why you have an exhaust pipe and a catalytic converter. So the excess that doesn't get burned goes out in, into the atmosphere. I know. It, let that sink in. Gas appliances are no different, okay? So mm -hmm. your furnace sits up there and your water heater, they burn your natural gas or your propane, but they don't burn 100% of it. But when you spray foam a house, we, you, we stuck it all inside. You've got to make sure yeah. that gets out of there. So the code requires a certain efficiency level of that water heater uh, or furnace, or you can go to tankless, locate them outside, or there's some other little tricks you could do to put them in a different part of the attic, but that's very complicated. Um, but it can be done, it's just not the norm. So just a couple things? Not, just a few a things. <laughs> There's other little things too, but that, that should suffice. Typically your AC, uh, you don't need as big of a unit. Mm -hmm. That's another kind of plus. And you might even need less units if you had a house that had multiple when you go to spray foam. And lastly, Lisa just wanted to let us know that she loves the funky pattern tile and she can't wait to see it in the laundry room and a bathroom as long as it doesn't get discontinued. <laughs> <laughs> we hope it we doesn't. We will send good thoughts. Again, August 2nd, 2022. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very cool. So uh, let's talk plumbing fixtures. Um, you want to talk plumbing fixtures first or you want to talk light fixtures first? We can do plumbing fixtures. We're going to talk plumbing fixtures next. So we use Delta. Uh, we've pulled some of the, of course, the, what's included. Um, typically, it's going to be your. Oh, I guess I lay it like this. Well, that's interesting. That's upside down. <laughs> so it is. So we've got Chrome. We've got some stainless for you to see. And then. Now, typically in the master, it's going to lay down, but um, you're going to, in the master bath and your half bath, you have an eight inch widespread faucet that's included on all the homes. So the four inch that you're looking at is going to be what's in the secondary bathrooms, but we're just doing this now for, for color and showing so you can kind of see. Um, there are a lot of options. Uh, we're only going to show a few, but of the most popular, like that, and then I'll get the kitchen one. Okay. Yeah, just looking at it. <laughs> well, while he's doing that, I'll show you the side that seems to be wanting to, to come and see you. Um, this is something I didn't know until our purchasing department was telling us, but the actual, even though you can go into a big box store and see a Delta faucet that has the same name, what you are looking at in the big box store is not the same thing that we are buying, even though they call it the same thing. That's right. Because the ones in the big box store are designed for you to install it, so it's going to have more plastic parts you're gonna be dealing with a lot more sturdy parts on ours. So if you are pricing, hey, this faucet versus that faucet, keep in mind, it's not apples to apples, even if it says it's the same model. 
And you can't put just any old faucet on any old valve. Okay, so the, the valves, which are the parts that come out of the wall, are, are made to marry up with these delta fixtures. So um, it's, it's not as simple as just let's run somewhere and change it out. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, one of the delta kitchen faucet options. Um, and of course, they have the touchless ones. That if you want to do that, and then what we're seeing is very popular these days, and as part of our selections is this champagne or brushed matte, gold, brushed matte gold. Yes. They, they call it different things depending upon the manufacturer. But, but this is we're seeing a lot of requests for these, so this would be your typical kitchen faucet ideas. Now we got to figure out a way to light this up. We got LED, you know, recess lights in most places, but. It might be time to pull up the old PowerPoint. Yes, let's look at lighting. And Dawn's clicker. So for your lighting, you're going to have a lot of different options. This is kind of the, the level one package called the Metcalf Collection. Um, we're showing it in an oil rubbed bronze. It's also going to be available in a satin nickel uh, finish for you. Um, next one is, I don't know how to say that, Kamal? Kamal, yeah. All right. Um, so same thing, and what we're showing is just the most popular uh, fixture. So you've got um, the chandelier that would be in your, your dining room, and the pendant fix the fixtures that would be you know in your vanities, um, things like that. So what what type of fixture is going to be used is determined by your floor plan. So when you talk to your consultant, they can tell you which one you're looking at for the different areas. And again, most of these are available in the variety of metal finishes. Uh, the Belton Collection's got that um, Edison bulb kind of look for it. It's a little bit more of that industrial feel that's very, very, very cool. Very I like trendy. these. Very, very trendy. trendy. Yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, the Roby Collection, um, again, it's got more of the metal going on, uh, more of a modern feel to it. Uh, so those are the options there. Uh, the Dunning Collection, which is my personal favorite. I just like, like that craftsman combination of the, the wood. Um, and, and the metal being brought in. And rope, rope. it's, yeah. yeah, this is gorgeous. You'll see this in a lot of our models because it's, it's a lot of people's favorites yeah. um, here. Um, and so it's, this, this is just showing kind of the variety that is available there, including what a, a pendant uh, fixture there. Um, then we also have ceiling fans um, in your Tilson home. Any of your, all of your bedrooms are going to include a ceiling fan um, as well as your living room. Yeah. Um, so you're gonna have your options there and it's gonna be the 52 inch um, ceiling fan, again, those are available in a variety of metals. Um, so these are, sorry, a variety of finishes. Um, we do actually have the metal, and then you also have the wood blades there. Um, and then this is the level two. Uh, so those are your options there as well. And then on your exterior lighting, um, you're going to have you know the traditional um, outside lights um, next to your doors and on your garages. And that's the, the included level, and Eric, if you want to. Just a lot of a lot of just light a pictures. lot of different yeah. carriage light, you know, a lot of carriage light options. And but it can help pick change from. the look of the house quite Very a bit, much so, yeah. um, and, and adds a lot of a lot of character to the outside of the house as opposed to just you know the old jelly jar on the back patio, which we did a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> I have replaced a lot of them um, in in my Tilson history. So but yeah, but yeah it's, it's a great way to jazz up the house that, mm -hmm. that there's not a lot of fixtures, so it's not it's pretty inexpensive um, mm -hmm. option to do because it's not like you have 15 of these on your house, right? You may have three or four. Yep, and um, a lot of different bulb styles. Um, yeah. You're sure to find one that kind of fits in with what you're looking for. You even got the, the Edison bulb option. Always. And we are using LED lighting um, mm -hmm. pretty much exclusively in, in these. So... We have questions. Let's hear it. All right. First question is actually from David. Hi, David. Hi, David. <laughs> Hi, David. <laughs> <laughs> he is wondering what he should do if he notices separation of the ground from his foundation. He noticed that it's happening right now because it's been so hot. Yes, yeah, so so David lives in that greater Georgetown area. Um, and so, yeah, what he's describing is you got the, the foundation where the foundation goes into the ground. He's noticing some separation. Um, so the ground is, is the moisture has gone away, right? And that happens just like a, a cake or a pie or a pizza from the outside in. So mm -hmm. the middle underneath the house is going to retain moisture longer than the edges will. Um, and you want to do something about that. So you, that is part of that homeowner maintenance, that maintaining moisture around. So we talked about maintaining positive drainage. That's what you need to do in really, really wet times, if it ever rains again, which it will. Um, but in really, really dry times, like we're getting into, you need to maintain that moisture content because what can happen is what's called edge drop. 
um, where the, literally the edges of the foundation could start to try to settle down. Soaker hoses is a great idea. Um, mm -hmm. You don't want to do it all at once, right? So I recommend a soaker hose on a timer. Uh, I think we have a warranty video that, that talks about that to some degree. We do, and actually Christy um, just sent me some more information on that. She asked for me to post it to the website. So we're going to be putting together ah. a blog post for you probably tomorrow morning um, and putting it on the website, kind of explaining what you need to be doing because we are fielding a lot of those those requests um, mm -hmm. in our customer care warranty department. So. Yep, and it's something we're great to get ahead of, okay? So mm -hmm. it's, it's never too late to start. <laughs> so start doing something now. Don't do it 24-7. It needs to be a kind of a slow, deliberate, gradual application, right? So maybe three or four days a week, 30, 45 minutes a day to start with, and then kind of gauge based on if you see that, is it getting worse, is it getting better, and kind of go from there. Don't hesitate to, if you, if you really have questions, contact our customer care, get some pictures to them, um, and we can kind of guide you in. But that's a, it's a really, really good, astute question from a really brilliant guy. So thank you, David. <laughs> thank you, David. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> uh, we have Shaloma wondering if there's a default placement of the outlets in the kitchen backsplash, if it's the middle of it or versus under the cabinets. Ah, it's actually neither of those. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's down low. Um, so what she's asking about, yeah, is sometimes you see this, like it's one of these beautiful backsplashes that we showed and you put a big old outlet right in the middle of it. This way. Right. Usually they love to destroy the style by going like this. We don't do that. We so go yeah, this we, way. we put a horizontal and we put them down about an inch or two above the countertop. Um, we have had some customers that often want them up higher, like uh, basically mounted underneath the upper cabinet, um, which is cool. That can be done. Just know that you may see a cord going up depending on what kind of appliance that you're using. So, but that's a great question. But yeah, we try to go low so we're not messing up your decorative. Mm -hmm. We have a question from Jarana. She ordered Frigidaire upgraded appliances and noticed that the double ovens have been discontinued. Would I have been notified if this was a problem since they were paid for up front? Yes. Uh, so if, if we've sent the PO, we typically will get notified, and, and they're very good about that, that mm -hmm. our Frigidaire supplier is very good about telling us when stuff's not available. Um, <laughs> and so you would have probably been notified. I'm not saying it's impossible. Maybe you're the first to find out. Um, but discontinued does not necessarily mean they don't have them. Mm -hmm. It means they're not making them anymore. It could mean they're gonzo, like no more. But typically there is some type of a supply and we use very large suppliers that, that can warehouse some of those things because we send in the POs very early in the process to try and combat that, try and beat that. Great. And last but not least, we have Faith. Just wanted to say we are so happy with our home so far. Can't wait to see all our selections come together soon. We are in the taping and floating stage, so we're starting to get the fun stuff going. Nice. Chauncey nice. and Wayne have taken amazing care of us. Oh, great. Good That's so good to hear. Yeah, thanks for commenting, too. And That's something we didn't get into really just yet. And, and you know, of course, we t interior paint colors, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are... Lots of no, choices. Yeah. Yes. We help you. It can be overwhelming. You don't have to do 15 different paint colors to make your house look good. In fact, you shouldn't. No. Um, <laughs> from a touching up later standpoint for yourself. The... You know, but, but, but there are, you know, you have your walls, you got your ceilings, you got your interior trim, um, you've got, you could do accent walls, that, that's a thing. Size baseboards, right? So you got three and a half inch base and two and a half inch casing, you got more farmhouse style, one by six base and one by four casing. Um, and you can see samples of these, of course, in the design centers and in a lot of our model homes. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we do them different, deliberately to try and be able to show you different things. Um, th and there's a lot of other, you know, she talked about switch plates and outlet colors, shapes. Um, we didn't get into grout. No, let's Because not we go like you, grout. we like you a lot. <laughs> uh, we did not get into grout, but truly, if you got any other questions, drop them in the comments and ask. Um, what's the, you know, would you say, how long they ex should expect to come in here and do this when they come and do one of these? You should expect about three to four hours, um, just, to, just to allow yourself enough time to kind of go through and make all the decisions and not feel rushed. Um, so don't plan, don't plan anything afterwards. If you were bringing the kids, bring something for them to do. Um, <laughs> Quite frankly, it can be done in three hours. With a professional yeah. help, it can be done in three hours. And truly, in my experience, anything longer than that, you start to kind of lose one or both people in the party. Right? I will like, say Eric is not as particular as I am, so. No, Eric is not. <laughs> um, Take it for what it's worth. Well, sometimes done is good enough <laughs> for this guy. But truly, like, like, Enjoy it. It is, it is exciting. It can be mm -hmm. overwhelming, but it is very, very exciting. And it's something that, that uh, you know, we know people spend a lot of time on. So 
because we know there's been a lot of time. I on do it. want to share one thing first before we go to this. I'm sorry, we're out of time. We can't do that. Okay. All right, no. All right, guys. If we can go back to the PowerPoint, I do want to show interior doors because this is something that does is does kind of set us apart from some other builders because we actually offer five options um, for you that are included, and we do not charge extra. Um, whereas a lot of builders pick one, and then if you want anything else you pay more for, we are offering them all as included. So you can choose from these options, which is the five panel smooth, uh, the two panel plank round top, the two panel round top smooth, the two panel square top smooth, um, or the six panel textured. Um, then you do also have some upgrade options if you wanted to. These are the cute etched glass um, that say pantry. We've also got one for laundry room. In case you forget where the laundry room is. Well, you know, visitors need to know where they can get the snacks, Eric. <laughs> and then we also seat. offer some options in barn doors um, that you can put in if you really want to go with that style. Yep. All righty. And now we and exterior doors as well. I don't know if we yes. have. Yes. I don't have exterior okay. doors in there. Uh, but yeah, there are lots and lots of options on that. And you can see a lot of those on our model homes. Um, and just, you could, we've got vinyl, we've got wood, we've got everything. We've got six from. foot eight tall. We've got eight foot tall. We've got three foot wide. We've got three and a half foot wide. So. There's a lot of options. And now for what we've been waiting for, what, what do we have, what have you and Kelsey been cooking up? So we have been working with our design team, um, with the, the interior designers to try to simplify this process for you. So if we just made your head completely, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I don't know where to start. Um, we're trying to kind of simplify it for you. So we've put together design style mood boards um, and we previewed these uh, with you yesterday. And for each one, there's actually two options. So we did one that is mostly our included colors and then we've also put one together that shows a little bit more of the upgrade options. But there are a variety of different styles and your design center has the list of everything that's included. So our designers picked out for you. Here's the countertop I would use. Here's the cabinet color. This is what I would do for my trim. This is what color my front door would be. All of those things kind of putting to you, you know that's going to look good together. And you know, like everything with us, you don't have to take it exactly like it is. If you're like, hey, I like it, but maybe not this cabinet color, maybe not this, this countertop, you can switch out whatever pieces you want, but we're just trying to give you a starting point to make it a little less overwhelming. Yes. So These are safe, and you can pick these, these yes. and be totally and happy. You, and know that your house is gonna look great, and we are even going to pick out your grout color for you, and you do not have to worry about it. So we've got the modern farmhouse, which is very popular. Um, we also have the industrial farmhouse style. And all of these guys are going to be on our blog and will go live immediately after this so you can kind of take some time to go through them um, and see. But we've got everything picked out for you down to, down to your shower tiles. And we're not gonna have, like we, we're using these boards for today um, because nothing is evergreen anymore it seems. Uh, we, right now we're gonna just be housing them electronically so that as things get discontinued or mm -hmm. added, we can update them easily, but uh, yes. let us know if there's if there's other ways you guys would like to see them, actually. So we have the traditional farmhouse. We've got some hill country options for you. So this is a hill country traditional. We also have some industrial. So these are the modern industrial styles. And so all of these, like I said, everything inside is already picked out for you, and you just know it's going to look lovely. You can't say enough good things about Kelsey doing this. Yes. This is amazing. This has definitely been a passion project and a long time coming, so we're really excited to, to get it out there. So modern contemporary, lots of grays and whites. Very and we mentioned cool that the, the sales consultants will have the Yes, the sales consultants will have all the details. So they can tell you exactly what that this is Santa Cecilia and all of that great stuff and, and do it for you and let you they can lay out all the samples for you so you can look at them all at once and then kind of flip out what you want to. But they've even recommended the shape of the tile. Like, these are amazing. Yeah. So we're going to run through these and show you. Again, this is kind of your last call for, for questions. We want to answer all your questions. Um, and they've even told you what sink style to do. You should wow. do the oval or the rectangle. This is, this is my dream come true. Yes. This is, if I never have to go I would love this because oh. I am terrible with colors. So I like pre-done palettes. Hill Country, modern Mediterranean. So if you like that style. Did you use like one of those word generators, Kelsey? Is that how you did these? Was this? That was all Michaela. All okay, Michaela. All Michaela. <laughs> Coastal Beachy, which is like one of my favorites. Yeah. Two more sets of these. Two and then more we'll sets. Answer any last questions that folks have. 
This is the Craftsman. So lots of wood and metal combinations in these. And then finally, and then transitional. Well, there you go. There you go. So we hope that you guys are as excited about those as we are, and let us know what you think. Give Kelsey claps in the, in the comments. Yes. All right, Kelsey, do we have any other final questions? We do. So Peggy is just pointing out that the Dunning lighting is actually not wood. It's a wood look, but it's metal. I guess she ordered it and oh, hers is oh, metal. Interesting. Yeah. I've never touched it, so I didn't realize. I have never touched it either, but it I looks beautiful. <laughs> and Peyton says, amazing work, team. Thank you for all the information. I'm sure that this live video, as well as the new design boards, will be extremely helpful when making decisions. Oh, thank you, Peyton. Julie says, those are a great idea, good starting place. And we do have a question from Earl. What options are available to build up a fireplace other than stone or brick? Okay, so we have seen, have seen tile surrounds. Um, that's very popular and a very clean and contemporary look. So mm -hmm. not a big giant color splash because stone and brick can be a big splash of color that you do have to decorate around. Right. Um, so tile is, is really the other best option. Um, if you're using an electric fireplace, it can just be in sheetrock around there. Uh, so, but if it's wood burning or, or gas, you do have to have some type of a surround of some sort um, that's a little more resistant um, to the heat than just, just sheetrock. That's traditionally what I've seen. I've, I've, we've had requests for um, shiplap. It's a little bit more complicated, and I don't know that we can do it everywhere. There are some places that you can't do that, so mm -hmm. I don't want to offer that up as a broadly uh, used solution because it's not, uh, but that's really about all I can think of as far yeah. as fireplace surrounds and hearths. Um, and it can be flush on the floor, so that's an easier to do with tile, of course. If you really do want it all the way down, um, that's best with tile because even even with stone or brick, if you if you want it flush, it's still going to be about two and a half three inches high, about, about a brick or stone off of the floor. Um, it'll come about two feet out, and then of course. And then your baby person. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, kids have to learn somehow. Um, That's not how. <laughs> so, and it can be done as just a surround, so just around the opening of the fireplace itself, or you can go all the way to the ceiling. Great question. We have a question from Rebecca. How do we get a better timeline? Oh, well, um, when we get one, we'll give you one. So, yeah, I, I, in all seriousness, I don't mean to make a lot of it. it is, it's very, very difficult right now. Um, you know, housing is not, regardless of what you may see or hear on the news, Housing has not slowed down, particularly in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, it is still, new construction is still running wide open uh, beyond what labor can keep up with and suppliers can keep up with. Um, HVAC, she mentioned earlier, is a, is a big one. We, yeah. Flex duct is a, is a huge problem right now, a huge shortage. Everybody's on allocation. Timelines are outrageous. So what we're, you know, when we get a better timeline, we do really do try to give it to our customers. Um, so I would say if you have a preferred time of the week that you want your builder to, to call you, then, then we need to convey that to them, you know, let them know like, hey, I, I really need to hear, you know, because we do try to call our customers every week, no matter what. Um, but if there's a particular time that you're like, I really need to hear from you it's at a certain time, you know, as long as it's a reasonable time, mm -hmm. you know, um, we, we can do that. But that's unfortunately... We're as, doing the best. The as fast we're as we can, yeah. The best information we have. As fast as we can, yeah. It, it doesn't do us any good to have the houses uh, sitting, but it also doesn't do any good to have a bunch of houses out there that no one can work on either. So mm -hmm. trying to balance that and keep everyone's projects moving, um, knowing the constraints of the supply chain of the available labor market, that's where we are. Where we are right now. But, but talk to your builder for sure if you're in construction, and if you're not, talk to your sales consultant. And trying, and we get we have a better time frame on the sales consultant on the front end on the pre-construction side. But that mm -hmm. construction, once it goes out to the field, it's it's very very difficult. Yeah, right it's now. really a week week by week. Very frustrating. Right I don't know that. Also, Gracia said that they did the painted stucco pushed out and electric fireplace. Ah, oh, there you go. there's yeah. another option. That sounds really pretty. That does sound pretty. Yeah. And Julie said. That she meant to say the boards are a good starting place for undecided people, but that wasn't her. She was done in an hour. Oh. <laughs> so there you go. All right, there you go. If you're a planner like Julie, you can in and out. I want this. Beautiful. And Anne said, fabulous. I loved our time in the design center. Great. 
And that is all we have right now that I can see. Awesome. And awesome. so this video, if you didn't get to see the whole thing, where would they be able to find it afterwards? Because it's housed. They can find it right here where you're watching right now. So it's, it always is going to stay on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, you will also be able to find it on our website. Um, we do create a blog post out of every video. So you can, you can watch it there. Um, and then you can see everything else that we're up to on our website, TiltsonHomes.com. We are also on Instagram um, at TiltsonHomes. Um, honestly, you found us. Now you have to hide from us. Like that's how this works now. We're BFFs, and you watch us forever. That's how it works. Yeah. So just so ask Will. It, do, it does not have to stop here. Uh, definitely set up an appointment with one of our design consultants. We're open seven days a week at all all of our locations, and uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. Love to help you through this process, and we genuinely soon hope to make you part of the Tilson family. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Bye, everybody.